All right, buddy. So what's your name and where you from? What's up, y'all? Um, I go by AG the Boss Man. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, uh, Williamsburg, Bushwick, to be precise. Currently living in Jacksonville, Florida, of all damn places, man. That's what's up, man. Good old Jacksonville. Uh, but you grew up and were raised out in New York City, Bushwick area, right? Yes, sir. I've been down in Jacksonville about a year and a half now since since my new release. Okay. Uh, and you've been uh to some pretty well-known prisons out in new york man attica being one of them uh yeah well, well first yeah, before attica. before we get into the penitentiary thing man uh what did you what was your main you know criminal offenses what what sent you to prison uh and how long did you do all together all right well i was young and wild and stupid man i couldn't stop robbing people to be honest man i was uh you know, you got something in your pockets, I want it, give it up. You know what I mean? Um, I knew how to fight. My dad was a professional boxer. So, I, you know, I'm a skinny dude, but I used to scare the shit out of people, man. <laughs> it was crazy. Oh, was he training you a little bit? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, just a lot of robberies and stuff like that. And, you know, what ended up making me go to prison, man, for that little one to three was I got caught in a stolen car, man, of all things. One to three. You, oh, yeah. Now I remember. You said you did one to three. But you ended up maxing it out and doing three piece, correct? Yeah, I started off with a one to three minimum security, and I ended up doing the whole three and coming home from Attica, which is like unheard of, man. Attica, and that is uh, a well known prison. That's, they had a huge riot there, right? Yeah, it's the site of the the biggest prison riot in U.S. history, man. And because of those riots, that's why a lot of a lot of things changed in prison. You know, they, that riot was fighting for the rights that we currently have or that the inmates currently have now, which might, really? not, seem, might not seem like much, but you had way less back then before that riot. Yeah. That riot, that riot was just fighting for humane conditions, pretty much, like basic necessity. Man. I never knew that. I didn't do my research on the whole riot and behind it. I have heard of it, though. Maybe I, I need to start doing a little more research on all these riots and why they started. Because I didn't know that. Uh yeah. Yeah, some of the most famous, you know, some of the most famous uh, prisons in history, man. You got to look them up. They got a lot of backstory to them. Attica being like the most famous one in New York. For sure. For sure. I definitely heard a lot about it and seen. They have a little bit of footage on it, too, right? Oh, yeah. They got, yeah, if you, you know, they got documentaries on the right. I mean, it, it, it was a it was a crazy time in history. You know what I yeah. mean? It's, they were really being treated like animals, like you. You think jail is tough now? Jail is nothing compared to what it was back then. In the seventies, man, like you, you couldn't get toilet paper, you couldn't get basic basic hygiene products, you, you couldn't get commissary items. You know, they fought for these things, and you, they fought for our recreation time. And, and you know what I mean? It, it's just without them, man, it, it would still be the same way it was. All right, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. We had to get a little camera angle. We got a little wider camera angle here now as well, but uh. So yeah, what were we talking about? Okay, let's let's just start off uh, with you going to lock up, man. Uh, first right, time going to Rikers, I'm guessing, right? Oof, that that was a biggie, man. My first time on Rikers, I just turned 19 years old. Uh -huh. a month after I turned 19, so I go with the adults. So my first experience at Rikers Island was a wild one. I walk into my dorm, 50 dudes, just beds everywhere, just 50 dudes within elbow space of each other you know what i mean this shit is crazy so i walk in i find a little bunk and i must have had a look on my face i mean look i'm, I'm 41 i don't look 41 now so yeah. imagine when i was 19 i look like i was about 15 bro. You know yeah what I'm yeah I can, I can only imagine yeah because you do look like you got the yeah. peter pan syndrome young young yeah, guy but old guy body yeah yeah i'm puerto rican and irish i got blue eyes i don't speak no spanish i was fucked all the way bro you know yeah I'm <laughs> <laughs> i know that's right all right so, so I so I step in the dorm and I, I must have had a look on my face like where the fuck am I? Cause a uh, OG Spanish dude comes over to me and he goes, Nah, yo, don't worry about it. This all right here. So literally, as soon as he finishes that sentence, like yo, it's all right, nothing happens here. They do what they call a, a like a huge search in the house. The, the the Ninja Turtles run in with the mask on and the and, and they just make everybody strip naked and go into the and. and this is my first time experiencing this. So I'm like, yo, what is this? <laughs> you know, what's going on here? Yeah. He just told me, he just told me it was I hit. So they do the search, they finish everything. So everybody's stuff is thrown in the middle of the floor. Everybody got to go look, look for it, through, look for their stuff through that whole pile. You know what I'm saying? So that very same Spanish dude that told me it was going to be a right here. He starts having an argument 
with a shorter African American dude, a little stocky dude, and they start fist fighting like right in front of my bed. I'm standing there and can't move. <laughs> Hey, he said there ain't nothing to worry about. Damn, like, man. Oh, man. So, you know, it took, a, it took a little while for me to get used to that whole, you know, being on Rikers Island, how to get used to how the phones ran. You know, I'm a kid, so I literally became a man in prison. You know what I mean? I had to learn different types of respect. It, it's weird in there, man. You know what I mean? And, and you how weren't to running it. with no gangs or anything? No gang at all. I, I okay. actually... I actually almost had a fight with the head of the Latin Kings one time, and he liked my style so much, he asked me to be a king, but I said no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Really? You know? Yeah, it was cool. So That's crazy, uh, man. Yeah, it's weird, man. So I'm in the island. You know, I see fights here and there. You know, it, it, it's just a lot It's just a lot of stuff happening, man. People going for the weakest victims a lot. You know what I'm saying? And you have to find that middle ground. You can't be too soft, and you can't be going in there – like you're like you're Joe Killer, you know what I mean? Because people are gonna test that. You have to learn how to carry yourself like a man. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I'll tie uh, it all up. How I did this bid, and then 17 years later, just did another bid, and it was much smoother. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll, I'll tie it all up around. So from Rikers Island, I spent about eight months on Rikers Island. Then I get sent upstate to Ulster County. That's our reception. We have two receptions. We have Ulster County is for nonviolent offenders, and we got downstate is for violent offenders. So I go to Ulster County, which is the reception. They send me to a program called the Shock Program. It's like a, a military program for people who have nonviolent crimes and their minimum sentence is three and under. So you could literally be there with three to life and still qualify for Shock. That's how it was back then, but they changed it a lot now. Yeah. But um, yeah, like your minimum, you could have three to whatever. As long as your minimum was three and no more, you could qualify for Shock. You do a six month military program and go home. Right? Damn. I was too hard headed for that. Yeah. I, you know, the CEOs, I couldn't shut up. You know what I mean? I, I, I hated authority. I, I refused shock. I had a chance to go home in six months. Had I known what would have happened, <laughs> I would have done it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they sent me to the shock program. I, I beat some kid up in there so I can get out. From now, the shock program that I'm in, it's a minimum security, no fences. No nothing. We're in the middle of the woods. And when you first get there, they make you take off your white sock and put it in a plastic Ziploc bag and they write your name on it. That's for the dogs in case you try to run. Oh, shit. Yeah, right. So I'm like, oh, man, where am I? So I, I leave that place and they're trying to convince me, oh, you're just a kid. We're going to send you to real jail. You're in trouble. All right, bro, you keep letting a. Uh, Keep that you keep judging a book by its cover. You don't know <laughs> what I'm used to. You know what I'm they saying? Don't, they don't know you trained in the boxing game. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I might look, I might look like a little soft white guy, but believe me, I, I've been through some things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they send me from minimum security. They send me to Elmira Max. It's my first time in a Max. I'm like, whoa, this is a new world. It was all right though. I, I had no problems there. I only stayed there for about two months until my classification dropped back down. They gave me the opportunity to go back to shop. I said, no, I'm good. I'd rather sit and eat and watch TV. You can't do none of that in shop. No TV, no commissary, no nothing. A straight military program all day, every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. So from Elmira Max, my classification went down and they sent me to Cayuga Medium. That's just a fence. No wall, no nothing. It's just razor fence. In Cayuga Medium, I end up getting into a fight and I refused to take a urine test because I didn't like the way the CO was, oh, let me see, let me see it and all that. I didn't like that. You know what I'm saying? So I refused it. <laughs> I end up going to the box. Now they have in New York, I don't know if, if it's like that in any other states, but they have what they call a shoe, an SHU. It's a double bunk box. It's a it's a box built on the jail. It's a whole nother complex. It was built on the on the prison and it's just uh it's about a hundred double bunk cells. So you could fit 200 people in there that are in the box. So you okay. have a bunk. So throughout my time there, I had a, uh, 90 days in a box. I had about 11 bunkies and got along with all of them except for two. Two of them were just MO. You know what I mean? Couldn't yeah. get along. Yeah. So I leave, I leave, um, I leave uh, the shoe and my classification went back up. Now they send me to Auburn Max. Now Because Auburn you Max, denied the urine screen. Yeah. Exactly. Were you dirty though? Uh, I probably was. I smoked weed. Ah, he, left, he left that one out, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'll tell you my thing. I'm 41 years old. Never yeah. put nothing up my nose. Never took a pill. I'm a pothead. 
<laughs> yeah, I understand that. Yeah, like, I, I get that. that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. So, all right, so now my classification goes up. They send me to Auburn Max. Now, a little brief history on Auburn Max. It's the oldest prison in New York State. It's the first one. It's over okay. 100 years old. This place is falling apart. Cracked when I'm there in the wintertime, and there's cracked windows. You're freezing to death. You have to wear all your clothes. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's yeah. horrible. It, it's dirty. It's filthy. You shut off the lights, you got a carpet of roaches. It, it's bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you go to a new jail in New York, you're on what they call a quarantine. I get, I forgot, maybe a week or a couple of days, but it's it's they leave you on keep lock while they figure out your status and see where they can put you. So while I'm on quarantine, I'm on loss of packages, loss of phone, loss of commissary for the dirty, for the urine shit. So I can't get anything. So I get a package sent to my boy's name. Now, while I'm waiting for the package to come, they come and they try to move me to another block. I refuse. So now I get another ticket, keep lock. Now I'm keep locked for 60 days in my same cell, but I got my pack. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not leaving without my pack. So now this is where it all kind of goes downhill and, and it goes to that last one that you said on how you know if you're a target and how it's not how people think where it's not like Shawshank Redemption where they jump in you in the shower. It's more of a a mind game and a little bit of weird pressure. It, 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 it's straight. Yeah. What I mean? Bam, so, bamboozling. Tom yeah, Foolery. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it, it's the weirdest thing. It's like, this actually works on people. I don't understand it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. All right. So this is how I end up going from Auburn to Attica. You know what I mean? They send me to Attica. Attica, they send the worst of the worst, but they can't do nothing else with you. You know what I mean? So. Oh, so it's still like that. It's, they got the worst of the worst. It was Attica. Yeah. So. Okay. So now, all right. I'm in Auburn and I'm on Keep Lock. I'm in A block. Uh, now, the way the blocks are set up, we got four tiers of 50 cells on each side. Like behind us, there's another four tiers of 50 cells. So there's people above. I'm on like the third tier. So there's somebody above me and, and two tiers below. Me. I'm in 25 cell out of the 50. So I'm dead smack in the middle, right? Now, for people that are on keep lock, you don't, you don't go out and shower with the general public until you get on keep lock, whether it be seven days or three days or whatever it is. So they have an empty cell that they gutted out and they make that the kid lock showers, right? Now, that cell was all the way in nine cell. So when I get out from my key, when they crack my cell from my shower, I got to get out and walk past all these cells to go to my shower. Now, yeah. obviously, everybody knows you don't look in people's cells when you're going by. You, you probably yeah. don't, you don't, you don't want to see nothing in there anyway. You know what I'm saying? And it's disrespectful. It's like somebody's house. Yeah. So I'm, I'm walking, minding my own business, bro. I'm walking, walking. I hear, um, yo, as soon as I pass like 13 cell, I'll never forget it. I pass 13 cell, I hear, yo. Unlucky yeah. ass 13. Bro, <laughs> yo, I turn, around <laughs> and I turn around and I look, it's a stocky black dude, right? Never seen him before. He goes, yo, you want to keep lock? I say, yeah, why? He said, you need something? Bro, nah, I'm good. I don't need nothing. I keep it moving, right? <laughs> so what the hell was that? Go take my shower. Get back out. Now I got to walk past them again to get back to myself. Walking, walking. I look like a baby, bro. You know what I'm saying? I swear to God. Walking, yeah. walking. I hear, yo. I look again. I'm like, yo, what's good? He goes, yo, bro, you sure you don't need nothing, man? You want to keep lock? I say, yo, bro, I'm, I'm good. I don't need nothing. Boom. Keep it moving. Go to my, I go to my cell. I lock in. I'm drying off. Now they got the porter. That it's one inmate that they let out to, to deal with the keep lock people. You know, give them water and yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Like the trustee. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was an Italian dude named Frank. So Frank goes past my cell really quick and he puts a magazine on my cell. I say, yo, what's that? He said, that's from 13 cell. I said, oh, <laughs> oh shit. He's pressuring you for real. Well, quick, quick, bro. All right. I'm like, he knows what he wants and he's, tra he's trying to get it, dog. <laughs> and, and yo, the worst part about it is when I'm on Rikers Island, people are telling me, yo, be careful when you go up north. And I'm like, yeah, right. Come on, bro. Get out of here. Yeah, right. So none of this tomfoolery was happening in uh, Rikers that you seen? Nah, nope. Okay. None, none at all. None at all. Now, I, I, I take the magazine. It's like a Playboy or a penthouse magazine. So I'm like, look, what, what is this dude? He trying to get you in the mood, too? Ooh. <laughs> Yo, if this story didn't end well for me, I would not be telling the trust. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I know. All right, all right. And so I take the magazine. I'm like, Yo, what the hell? I open it up. Bro, there's a little kite in there, right? And this is how I knew. This is what hit me that something's not really right. It said, when do you get off keep lock, right? 
but it had a smiley face. Oh, God. I said, wait, I'm in maximum security prison. Who is sending people notes with smiley faces on? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, it's, <laughs> something's not right. So yeah. I, I, I wrote back. I said, bro, don't worry about when I get off, keep lock, stop sending me stuff. Give it to the porter. The porter brings it to me. Now, I got my neighbor. He's a god body dude. Cool dude. You know what I'm saying? He's older than me, like 25, 26. His name is YG. He on keep lock too, so I got cool with him. God body. That's 5%er, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Damn, I ain't heard that word in a while, man. It's, it's still around, bro. They still yeah. around. Yeah, I mean, I, I always say 5%er, but I don't, I don't, I couldn't, God body phrase. Yeah, I ain't heard that one in a while. And mind okay. you, this is the late 90s when all of that is popping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Roots, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All of that is popping. So this dude, is you're 5%er, you're God body. Yo, bro, I swear, not 20 minutes later, the porter comes again, passes my cell, and puts a bowl on my, on my, on my little <laughs> flap to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, bro, what's that? He said, that's from 13 so. Bro, I open it. It's a plate of food. I said, I ain't eating this shit. Yo, YG, you want to keep lock, right? I said, yo, this dude over here just sent me a bunch of food. I'm not going to eat it, bro. I don't want to throw it away. You want it? He's like, yeah, I'll take it. Give it to him. He eats it. I said, yo, wash out son's plate because I don't want no problems. You know what I'm saying? Wash out the plate. I send Duke a letter with the plate, with his plate back. I said, bro, I just gave the food to my neighbor. Stop sending me things. I don't need nothing. My neighbor ate that, right? He sends me a letter back. Oh, yo, just ask your neighbor about me. I'm a good Christian brother. I'm trying to look out for you. Da da da. This and that. I say, yo, what is, yo, what is this dude doing? I knock on my neighbor's cell. Do you dad. know what he's trying to do though? I got Already? a feeling, but I'm like, no, it can't be. It can't be. It okay. Can't be. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's just one of those guys that probably he's like, it can't be that kind of guy, you know, but. Oh, well, you can't be doing that to me. Like, you can't think that's okay, bro. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. So I, I, I put my mirror so I can, I can look at my neighbor. Right? I'm like, yo, YG, yo, what's good with what I'm doing the 13th? Man, he's telling me he's he a good Christian brother. He's trying to look out. So, so YG, he literally do. He go, yeah, man, he a good Christian dude. <laughs> I start laughing. I say, yo, bro, what you laughing at? He's like, yo, AG, I like you, bro. I can't do it to you. Yo, he a booty bandit. I said, bro, all right, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I say, yo, bro, don't ever write me no letters again. Yo, bro, he goes out to a yard. He's all the way in, in 13 cell. He's coming back from yard. He'll run past his cell, run up my cell, and throw a stick of weed in my damn cell. I'm like. Wait, bro. the dude in 13? Yeah. Yeah, and then run back to his cell. So I'm like, yo, what's this dude doing? Now, mind you, I'm about to get off keep lock in like seven or eight days, so I got to do something quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, come to find out, Everybody in the damn jail knew what was happening except for me, and they're looking to see how I'm going to react. I didn't oh, find this out until shit. later. They're... I had no idea. I had no idea until later on when I ran into dudes. Like I, After that, they were like, bro, we love you, bro. You know what I'm saying? All right, so now I let my neighbor. He, he, he's like, yo, bro, you getting off keep lock in two days. I said, yeah. He said, yo, why don't you try to get everything you can from that dude before you, before you cut him? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, bet. You know what? I'm young. I'm stupid. I say, yo, bet. I wrote son a letter. I say, yo, you want to look out? I'm going on a visit. Now, this is the day before I get off Keep Lock. I say, yo, I'm going on a visit tomorrow. Bring me your shoes, your chain, all of the shit, and your radio. I need to hold your radio. Uh, <laughs> Holy shit. That's a good idea. Hey, look, before you go forward with the story, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to know. A lot of people, because I've told a story like this before, and someone got bamboozled kind of the same exact way, and actually it happened to them. Uh, <laughs> inmates will not say shit Yo. if they don't mess with you like that, and they will be entertained by watching this shit go down. They're uh, waiting to see what unfolds, man. They're yeah, that's it's entertaining. It's something for them to do and, and gossip yeah. a little bit about. You know what I mean? So... And there it's not you go. happening to them, so they good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but go ahead. You said uh, that's a good ass idea, though, boy. You got the sneakers and the chain. Yeah, I'm on keep lock. I ain't got nothing. I'm on loss of everything, so I yeah. need it. You know what I'm saying yeah. so. Now I can't get nobody. I'm I'm hollering at my man upstairs. I'm hollering at everybody I know. I can't get a New Yorker. That's a, a gem store in New York, razor. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody wants to give up their New Yorker. My only option, yo, people are telling me, yo, stab him. I'm like, bro, I got a one to three. I ain't stabbing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you're going to remember me. You know what I'm saying? So what I ended up doing, they give you two shaving razors to shave, two little state razors. 
And every week they come by to check your razors, make sure they got the blade in it. You can turn them in and trade them in for other razors if you want, but you got to have them razors at all times. Now, I said, this probably ain't going to end well, so I'm just going to break my razors, man. I got to do what I got to do. I broke my two razors. My neighbor helped me fashion a holster for it. We had uh, we took the bottom of a matchbook, put the two razors in there, taped it up, but my, my neighbor did something slick. He put a little piece of cardboard in between the two blades so that every one cut is two cuts, like train tracks, and you can't stitch it. Oh, shit. Bro, I'm learning a lot today. Damn, you know that guy's good. And look, he's probably, he's ready for you to go to town, boy, you know? This is like, I hate to say it, but he's like, this guy's about to crash hard, man. Yeah, so I'm like, all right, so they set it all up, bro. If, if, if other people didn't see it, like, I wouldn't have believed this happened, right? The very next day, I'm scared to death. I'm not going to lie, I'm scared to death. I'm getting off key block. Now, bro, I got, I made, I, I got the, the blade, right? I got my mirror. My neighbor's still on key block, so his job is to have his mirror out and watch out for anybody else, any CEOs coming up and down. Because he knows as soon as my gate cracks and this dude comes and brings me that bag, I'm eating him. You know what I'm saying? So he has to be a lookout. Bro, I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm scared to death. I ain't never did nothing like this before, man. I'm like, damn, right? So I got my mirror out and I'm waiting. All the cells are about to crack. Boom. All the cells crack. I got my mirror out and I got the blade in my hand behind the mirror. All the cells crack including mine, and I'm looking, I see him creep out of his cell, look down the way he's supposed to be going, you know, make sure the seals aren't looking, and he got a bag in his hand with everything that I asked him for. He starts running up towards my cell with the bag. I'm like, yes, but damn, now I got to do this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he gets to my cell, right? I step out. I still got the mirror and the blade in here, so all he sees is the mirror. I grab the bag. I say, yo, this is everything? He said, yeah. I said, I, I threw it behind me on my bed. Now I freeze. I'm like, uh, looking at him. You know what I'm saying? Bro, you know, I'm, to be honest, you know what made me do it? He looked at me like like the way a, a, a chick looks at a dude when they like him. Yeah. Just that look he gave me. And I'm like, yo, he had on a, I never forget, he had on a red hoodie and he had shades on. You know what I'm saying? So he took the shades off and he, he just gives me that look. Like he's fucking up, bro. And it made, it made, me, it made me sit to my damn stomach. So, bro, I literally said, yo, bro, what's that on your face? He said, what? I said, no. He handed me his face. He put his face in my hand. Oh, damn. He, he went like this. And I said, right there. I, I said, right there. He's smiling. I said, right there. Huh, huh. Hit him twice. That smile disappeared. Huh. I pull back, push him away, lock myself. Throw, throw, throw the blade in the toilet bowl and lay down trying to read my book when I'm shaking. He runs away. So I'm like, I bet he's going to go lock in. We're going to handle this another time. My neighbor tells me, yo, hey, he coming back. I say, he coming back? What, you, what you mean he coming back? Yo, he said, yo, he coming back. He runs back now. Holy the, the shit, tier. dude. The whole tier is empty and the CEOs are down there like, yo, what are you doing? He made it hot. You know what I'm saying? Now, he's leaking blood just in front of my cell. And Bro, he, he literally comes over to me. He goes, yo, just give me back my shit and I'll forget about the cutting. I say, yo, bro, why do you think I cut you, stupid? People are yelling at him from other cells. Yo, lock in. Yo, lock in. You try to F my little man, bro. That's what you get. Lock in, lock in. He don't want to lock in. CEOs are still yelling at him. He leaking, leaking. And I'm laying in bed like, yo, bro, get out of here. You're not getting nothing back. Get out of here. Go lock in. Lock in. My neighbor shows him a mirror. He goes, yo, bro, look, you're bleeding badly. He grabs the mirror and looks at it and screams, ah, and runs back down the tier. I said, all right, good. He gone. I start passing his stuff over to my neighbor in the bag, right? So when I get to his radio, my, na my neighbor goes, yo, he coming back again. <laughs> I said, no. So he's running back down the tier trying to grab his radio. I said, what? I threw it off the tier and broke it. So he ain't getting it. Nobody getting it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, That's crazy, yeah. man. Bro, he gets back to me. He goes, bro, you're going to the box. I said, what? Damn. I said, what? You snitching? Bro, lock in. Lock in. Everybody's yelling at him. Jamie, lock in. Lock in. Lock in. Go lock in. Handle that later. While I'm there talking to him, two CEOs walk up on him, and the first thing they go is, oh, bro, you cut? All right, turn around. And they handcuff him. He goes, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you who did it in a minute. It wasn't none of these guys, but 25 cell got all my stuff in there. I said, bro, 
Why you ain't telling me you wanted your stuff back, man? I'm trying to handle your stuff, and you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Like, what the hell's going on? Like, yeah, I borrowed it. Yeah, I'm giving it back to you. I'm acting like I borrowed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you're playing it off for the police, yeah. So the COs ain't even paying up. They're like, all right, don't worry about that. They take him away, right? So I'm like, I'm standing there. Now, the dude that usually makes his rounds to make sure the key block people are, are, are in the in the key block cell, bro, very nonchalantly, walks by with his clipboard, right? Stops by my cell and goes, you the fuck that did the cutting? I said, what? I said, bro, I ain't cut nobody. He goes, yeah, right. keeps it moving. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. Comes back down. Very nonchalantly, again, stops by myself. You at least got the weapon? I said, bro, what weapon? I didn't cut I didn't cut nobody. He goes, yeah, well, you ain't cut me or none of my officers, so I don't really care. Keeps it moving. I'm hoping that's the end of it. It wasn't. It wasn't. Now, mind you, all in the meantime, this dude has been writing me letters, bro, that are getting me sick to my stomach. Talking about, yo, when you get off Keep Lock, you're going to come be my bunkie. I'm going to take care of you and this and that. Like, yo, bro, like, I can't, like, I can't fathom it. You know what I'm saying? So, it's been building up. It's been building up. And it's me or him. So it's going to be him. It's not going to be me. So after that CO leaves, another plain CO just comes and stands in front of my cell. Doesn't say nothing. He's just standing there watching. Me. Watching. Me. He looks like a little Herbie CO. He's not one of them tough COs either. It's like, who is this dude? I've never saw him before. So I, I tell him, I'm like, I'm like, officer, what happened? He goes, I don't know, man. I said, but what's going on? He's like, I don't know. It doesn't look good. I said, what doesn't look good? He's like, he's saying you cut him. I said, yo, I didn't cut that dude. That was my boy, bro. And I bought his stuff. And now he comes running running all up and down the tier talking about somebody cut him. And he's leaving the jail. Like, he needs his stuff back. And I'm trying to hand it back to him. And he don't stop running. He's like, I don't know, man. All the blood is in front of your cell. While I'm talking to him, my cell cracks. And four of the biggest white boys you will ever see in your life walk into my cell. They got to duck down <laughs> to get in my cell. Uh, we, we COs, right? I see them, turn around, put my hands behind my back. They're leading me down the tier. Once they get me off the tier, boom, they start beating the crap at me. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, yo, I didn't cut nobody. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do none of that. Da, da, da. So now they're taking me to the box. They're like, all right, we're going to get to the box when there's no cameras and we're we really going to do some damage to you, right? I'm like, dead. So we get to the box and I see the big, Big red door to the box, big steel door. And before we get there, a sergeant comes over and he looks at me like, no, I mean, this, this dude is just a kid. Like, he's just giving me that look. Like, yo, bro, what happened? I said, and I just looked at him. I'm like, damn, I don't even know whether I should say something or what. Like, I, like, what do I do in this situation? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm like, damn, bro. I, I put my head down. He goes, yo, I don't, don't try to make nothing up either, right? I said, man, I'm not, man. I said, I broke down, bro. 100, I'm not going to lie. Look at it how you want. I broke down crying. I say, yo, dude is a booty bandit. That's that's what's happening here. That's what it is in there. I said, dude is a booty bandit, and I'm not going to be nobody's bitch. Started crying. I got mad. Once I said that, the dudes that were beating me up and everybody, the oh, oh, chill, we got you. We got you. We don't like that. We don't like that shit here either, man. Yo, bro, my heart literally, like, I'm like, really? I'm like, holy crap. Like, bro. bro. They had respect for me. I guess they, they don't really see stuff like that, like people standing up to them like that. They had such respect for me that when the box door opens and they came out with their leather gloves, they were like, nah, 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 chill. He's all right. He cut a booty bandit. I'm like, damn. I'm in the box. They that- said he caught our booty bandit? Cut. He cut. Oh, he cut. I was about to say, damn, this guy was probably notorious in there or something. Come to find out, he just got caught doing that with somebody else right before he came down to my tier. Oh damn! He was lonely, trying to trying to find something to fill that void. He was a little mo. Something was wrong with him. Something was a little wrong with him, right? Yeah. So now, now I'm in the box, and COs are actually coming and passing me cigarettes, talking about, "Yo, I usually don't do this, but I respect you because you cut booty bandit." I'm like, "Damn!" Like it traveled around everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So I leave all burn box, and they send me back to the to the shoe, to the double bunk box. Now while I'm in the shoe, I got like 90 days. To, to do in the shoe, and I got like about a year left on my bid. They take my good time for, the, for when I cut them. They took my year of good time, so I'm gonna have to max out. So while I'm in the while I'm in the shoe, they try to find every reason to give you tickets, man. It's like just for passing stuff, you get a ticket. So now I got to the point where I kept catching so many damn tickets that they can't give me any more box time. My box time is beyond my max. So the only punishment they could give me is what they call the loaf. The, res- the restricted oh, diet. Yeah. 
bro, three times a day, whatever leftovers is done at the end of the day, they make it into a big giant loaf of something that they call bread, but I don't know what it is, bro. And they give it to you and they give you a cup of cabbage, nothing to drink, nothing else, just a loaf and a cup of cabbage three times a day. That's Couldn't nasty, do it. man. Couldn't do it. I kept refusing the loaf, bro. I went down to like 130 pounds. I'm in there. I'm in there causing hell in there to the point where it was like, bro, we cannot keep him here. We got to send him to Attica. I didn't know I was going to Attica. Or they told me, pack up. They don't let you know where you're going. Bro, we pulled up in front of Attica. And I swear I almost shit myself, man. It was like an old time castle. And I'm like, damn it. Like, what have I gotten myself into now, man? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. never seen nothing like it. Auburn looked crazy and Elmira looked crazy, but Attica, it really looks like a medieval castle. Man. So I'm like, damn it. I'll go up in there and I lied to the I lied to the damn um to the lieutenant that's interviewing me. He's like, You're on loss of anything? I'm like, nope. He's like, you on keep locking nothing? I said, nope. Box time, nope. So I lied to him and they sent me to the regular <laughs> to the regular population for like a week and I'm chilling. Got a bunkie in there, I'm eating real food, I'm I'm doing good. CO come, the lieutenant comes to my side, he said, You lied to me. You're on loss of this, you're on loss of that, and you got box time. I got somewhere I'm sending you. The worst part of Attica that you could be sent to, they call it the snake pit. It's like they put you there and they forget about you. You know, I met some of the craziest people I've ever met in prison in the, the snake pit. You know what I mean? It's, you're in a cell, 23 and 1, like your channel. You know what I'm saying? And these dudes are crazy. I met two cells away from me. There was a young dude from Staten Island. His name was Alan. All right? couple of cells down we had this og blood dude that like he just liked messing with people he just liked it you know what i'm saying and if you let him do it to you're gonna do it so alan was a little mo so you know he starts he got a really really soft voice he's a little skinny black dude but he got a really soft. he sounds like like a little white guy you know what i mean and yeah he gets on the gate he starts talking about his girl so now the blood dude down the down the tier he screams out yo alan i got your girl under my bed over here this dude alan screams, ah, starts banging his head on the bars, bing, bing, splits his hole in the head open. Like, bro, like, never seen nothing like this before. The CEO's got to come, rush him out, bring him away for like a week. They bring him back bandaged up, looking like mum raw, and he's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. crazy as people. Another dude I met in that snake pit, it was a dude, he was like a Native American, but he was like light-skinned like me. You know what I'm saying? Long hair. Some days his name would be Harry, and some days his name would be Jesse. Right now, the only time you see these people is when they get cracked out and they go to the showers and stuff like that. You can't get to nobody. You know what I'm saying so. Everybody's tough. You know what I'm saying this dude, Harry Jesse, whatever his name is, he just gets on the gate one day and starts screaming out that he was he's a hermaphrodite. So what the hell? Yeah, bro, it's the weirdest thing. So now he would also randomly get on the gate and start screaming um racial slurs. Oh, just start screaming and then be like, anybody got a cigarette? <laughs> so it's yeah, like, that's crazy. That dude's bad shit, crazy man. See, that's why they need psych wards, man, not prisons. You know. So I, I gotta live for a year, like, like you know, going through this, and it's more of a mental thing than anything, man. Like, only good thing about it is I ain't have no wife and kids at the time that made it hard. You God, that would have made it real hard. Well, crazy. So, so now, you stayed back there the whole the whole year. I stayed. I stayed in Attica the whole year. I got released December twenty sixth of two thousand. That's when I got released. My pops came up to see me on a, uh, in September for my birthday. I turned 22. Got released the day after Christmas, 2000. Now, when I got released, I wanted to know more. Bro, I learned my lesson. I became a man. I got a job. I was working at a law firm. I'm doing debt collections. I'm calling people. Yeah, you owe money. Hang up on me. Whatever. Cool. Now, about 2007, 2008, I met my current wife that I'm with now. Right? We got a life established together. We got an apartment. I got a kid from another marriage. You know, I came home after my first bit. I had a kid, kept me out of trouble. So now I'm with my wife now. We got established and I lose my job. All right. So I'm like, damn, I can't do that right now. You know what I'm saying? I can't take this right now. This chick, she won't leave me. Like, it's going to look crazy. My cousin, I had a cousin that was selling heroin at the time. This is all in Brooklyn. He's selling, he's trying to sell heroin at the time and not doing a very good job at it. He's a little messed up, right? Not too bright. So when I lose my job, he'd been asking me to go go work with him. I kept saying, nah, 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 you, you kind of dumb. You know what I'm saying? So 
Finally, I, I lose my job. I said, all right, bro, I'm, 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 I'm going to work with you. He gives me a bundle of heroin. Mind you, I'm not a drug dealer, bro. He gives me a bundle of heroin. I said, all right, what do I do with this? He's like, what do you mean? I said, bro, I don't know nothing about heroin. You got our little cousin making tons of money. You're sending him on, 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 on runs and stuff like that. Like, he don't even got to do nothing. Like, you're not going to send me nowhere? He was jealous of me. He ain't want me to make no money. But long story short, I popped. With that one bundle, I popped. You know what I'm saying? Like, my clientele grew and grew and grew to the point where my cousin ended up getting locked up. Now, my cousin, he ended up getting the best dope in Brooklyn at, like, $47 a gram, which is unheard of. Like, good dope in Brooklyn at the time was about $65 a gram. He was getting it straight from Ecuador for about $47 a gram. And it's the best dope around. And the guy's giving it to him on the arm. He don't got to pay nothing for it. So we getting rich. We getting rich. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like we supplied other suppliers. One thing I was good at was being a drug dealer. My cousin got caught by the feds because he ain't listening to me. I'm telling him, bro, I did a bid and listen to oh, me. So he me. did get caught up for it. Yeah, he got caught. He got caught okay. because that he, makes me feel better about you talking about him then. That's good. Nah, he okay. got caught up because he's like, everybody, <laughs> look at me. I got money. Look what I'm doing. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Like, I, I love him to this day. We still talk every day that he admits his fault. You know what I'm saying? So he ended up getting caught by the feds. They raided while I was there and stuff like that. I ended up taking over the business and I grew it because I'm I'm more of a one-man gang kind of, kind of dude. I became a music producer. I was a producer for a dude named Uncle Murder from Brooklyn. I'm not sure how to, I'm sure how familiar you are with him, but he's semi-famous in New York. He signed with 50 Cent now. So I was producing with him, got a studio, met a lot of connects through him, getting that money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now I'm a dope boy for years. No problems. Like, bro, you wouldn't even... You wouldn't even think it if you saw me. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way I look now is the way I go out and sell my dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm doing it in Manhattan. I blend in. You know what I'm saying? So, now, my mistake was, I'm, I'm doing real good at selling dope. My mistake was, I ran into a computer hack, one of these scammers. Right? Should have never listened to him, man. I got interested. I got interested. So, he, first thing he asked me, yo, you know anybody that could open up bank accounts? I'm like, yeah, bro, I got dope customers. Yeah. Hell yeah. I have this one chick, one chick. Man, I think I heard of this scheme too, man. They open up a, man, I've had probably about three people ask me to jump in on this bandwagon. I think I know, what you, let's not talk about it into depth and detail, but right. go ahead. All right, so what I got in trouble for, basically the chick opened up a bunch of accounts. Somebody was sending money to accounts that didn't belong there. And we got, a, we got about $270,000 in four months. Yeah. She got caught. She got caught and told on me, of course. You know what I'm saying? So I end up getting a one to three. 17 years later, I got to go back into prison. Now I got a family, wife, kids. You know what I'm saying? But what struck me as the craziest, bro, I walked into Rikers Island 17 years later, and it was like I never left. Nothing changed. The menu was the same. The people were the same. The beds were just like, it didn't change one bit in 17 years. What about the gangs? That, that didn't change at all? Well, you know who was really running at this time? When I was there in 97, I was at the height of the blood and the and the Latin King War. Yeah. You know who's running the island right now? is the Dominicans, the Trinis. Oh, yeah, Trinis, I heard that. They running it. So they warring with the bloods. Latin Kings are like not really, they like done. Nietas are like non-existent. They didn't respect Nietas back then. You know what I'm saying? Like, Nietas is the only gang where you can marry another man. Like, I don't understand that. That's the only, you know, it's weird. Never knew but, that. Uh, <laughs> yes, right? So, you know, I'm in Rikers Island 17 years later. I'm like, bro, this is like I never left. Like, nothing's changed. The people are the same. The bed is the same. The food is the same. It's crazy. So, I end up taking a one to three for this. For this little, uh, I got charged with grand larceny in the second degree, over 50 bands. Take a little one to three. This time they gave me shock. I did shock. 40 years old, went in there, did shock, busted out. I got to get home to my wife and kids, man. So now I've been home. I came home March of 2018. Uh, yeah, March 2018. I max out March of next year. I'm almost there, bro. Got a job. I joined the union. I had another baby since I've been home. I, you know, I got my, I got my son is still in New York. He's 17. I got my daughter out here with me. She's eight. And I got my little 10 month old son, man. And That's awesome, man. You know, it's like I'm trying hard, man. It's it's not easy being this broke, bro. Like I've been broke. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, when not... you have that money, boy, it sucks when you ain't got no more. You know? 
bro, I, I, I kick myself in the ass, bro. Every time I open my closet, I got a closet full of Gucci, Louis, Versace, and it's doing nothing for me out here. Nothing. Yeah. Came down here and I was doing tree work for nine dollars an hour. You know what I mean? But you know, more more of the story, I guess. At the end of the day, is man, I mean, prison is is gonna be what you make of it. You know, when I went in this time, I knew what to expect, so I made sure it went a lot smoother. You know what I mean? Matter of fact, I, I'm in, I'm in I'm in a house this time that's all bloods, it's all apes. But I'm a grown ass man, so I went in there ready. I had stuff to you know stuff to sell in there ready. I went in there packed up. You know what I'm saying? I knew how to move. And there came a time where I'm in a blood house, it's all apes. That's that's the set of bloods or that's in or whatever. I'm in the house and there's this one Spanish dude that's head that he's cool with like the head of the bloods that's in there and the head of the blood sleeps like right across from me. So I told the Spanish dude, I was like, yo, not for nothing, man, but I'm kind of feeling uneasy. Why that dude keeps staring at me? Like every time I look up, he's looking at me, bro. Like, what's going on? Like, do I gotta put my shoes on? Like, what's good? He goes, nah, bro. He actually came and asked me about you. He said, bro, he liked the way you move. You move mad militant. He's thinking about bringing you home. Meaning, meaning, making me a blood. I was like, bro, nah. Tell him I'm good. <laughs> tell him the only way I'm going home is on parole, bro. I'm good, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, so uh, bloods and uh, or just say gang members in general, man. I mean, they're pretty open to other races joining or other nationalities, ethnicities. Not Latin kings. You gotta be. You have to be Latin. Some part of you got to be Latin. Like, they wanted me, like, I'm Puerto Rican and Irish. So when I first got to Rikers Island, I had a problem with the, 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 the I used to chill with only black dudes. That's all I used to chill with because I didn't fit in with the white dudes. And the Spanish dudes didn't really like me because I don't speak Spanish. My last name's Sanchez, and I don't speak no Spanish. Yeah. And they're looking at me like, yo, bro, like, you're not really supposed to. I chill with the black dudes. That's all I chill with. You know what I'm saying? And they used to get mad at me. I'm like, yo, bro, well, I'm going to chill with you when y'all don't even really like me, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not stupid. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, a blood, you could, bro, I saw Chinese bloods that barely spoke any English, but they knew how to say, oh, train one, oh, tra you know, it's the weirdest thing, man. I must say, you ain't done too, uh, a whole bunch of time, like some people have been on the show, and myself, I ain't done a bunch of time, uh, but you definitely know how to tell a story, man. You know, I sat here and didn't even have to ask a damn question except for one or two and I love it man I love to hear good stories like this and uh you have a good way of putting it man you know uh appreciate the opportunity man like I said I like your work man and I figured that I got stories man I just got to make sure I can tell them correctly and the way people are going to enjoy man I hope I hope I accomplish that for you. I think people are going to enjoy your show uh your episode man and look uh maybe I'll bring you on for a part 2 and like I said before you know this channel it's my channel but man i tell you what people like you and everyone that comes on to this channel man y'all are making this channel you know what i mean so i salute to you for coming on telling your story uh and just keep doing what you're doing out there man you got do you have any kind of shout outs you like to say before we dip on out y'all want to give a shout out to my my cousin ko 187 the whole 187 crew the whole gmg crew getting money gangsters um uncle murder even though we ain't on good terms right now Murk, but we're gonna get that right bro you know what i'm saying um my boy Phil, I'm gonna shout out my son Isaiah back in New York. Shout out the whole NYC, bro. I'll be coming back soon. I'm all papers in March, bro. I'll be back. 